Well, now I want to go to uh, Phil Edholm, who handles our uh, local clubs and NMRA division segments for us. Uh, Phil, what do you got for us this evening? Uh, this evening, I not, don't have a guest this evening. And what I'm going to do is spend just a couple of minutes talking about something we did in the, uh, in the Pacific Coast region that I think could be interesting for other regions to think about. And um, kind of got kind of to uh, to talk about this. I actually put a slide, a little slide together, and I'll, I'll kind of talk about what we did and why. And I think it'll be kind of interesting as you think about recruiting. So this is focused purely on the concept of what do we do to do recruiting. So kind of a little bit of thought process about a region, and basically, you know how do you recruit and what do you need to do to recruit? So on the upper left, to take a prototypical, um, not division, it's actually a region. I was, this literally got created while we were talking here. Um, so assume you have a regional membership of 800. So if you look at the attrition rate and just to give a thought process here, you know, if you assume that the average modeler stays in the NMRA for 30 years and ages out, you're at somewhere around 3% attrition just from aging out. Um, you know, if members leave for other reasons, they move um, to places or just decide not to be members anymore, you know, a 5% or 7% annual attrition rate is not an unreasonable number to plan on. So if you look at that from the perspective of new members, how many new members do you need to generate every year to replace your attrition? So, you know, it's somewhere, if you look at this model, between 24 and 56 for that 800-member 800, 800 um, region. And so this is just kind of the basics of, of basic mathematics of how stuff works out. So then you come down to the bottom and say, okay, how do people find out about you? Now, obviously, some people find out about you in terms of magazines where there's an NMRA ad. They find the NMRA. It's kind of random. But as a region, you have no control whatsoever over that. So if you think about where we can recruit and where we generally do recruit, we go to general train shows. Um, we may go have a, a show. We've heard about the Henry talked in his division about what they do as far as a show they run. Um, you can go to hobby shops. Um, you can go to local clubs. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about why that's so interesting. We talk about the little model on the right. Um, and then the, the second question, this is the question we really got into in the Pacific Coast region was, how much should we spend on recruiting? As we had a long conversation and we concluded the budget, and I think it was about $1,200, $1,000 for recruiting for 2023. Um, so the perspective is say, you know, if you budget at $3 a member for all of the things you do, your budget's $2,400, would you say, I should spend half my budget on recruiting that's $1,200. So the question is, how do you spend that $1,200? So the little model on the right, um, I wrote a book, if you're interested, it's called Napkin Logic. It's up on Amazon. It's uh, pretty highly rated, but it's a set of different business concepts. And one of the business concepts is this idea of how customers become customers. So the idea is, you know, there's a universe of unknown suspects of people who could buy your product or your service or whatever, or in this case, who might want to join the NMRA. And so then what you do is you've got to go from that universe of known suspects to known or identified suspects. So this is when you know who that person is. They've raised their hand. They've said, hi, I'm interested in talking to you about your product, what you do, et cetera. Um, generally, by the way, that's called lead generation. Once you have a lead and someone has said expressed interest, now there really are two more steps you have to go through. And I didn't draw this up. And again, if you're interested, there's a chapter in the book about this in great detail. But basically, to go from known suspects to qualified prospects, the best way to think about that is you have to disqualify the people that are not going to buy from you. So, you know, if, if your product, if you're, if you're selling um, a Mercedes Benz that costs $70,000, and a 16-year-old kid shows up and expresses great interest, you might want to qualify that they're going to be able to afford to buy that car. So with that kind of as a thought process, 
you've got to get down to qualified prospects and then you've got to sell to them to become customers. So if we think about this again from a recruiting perspective, because if you think about these things in the right way, you can actually think about how you want to step, put the steps in. So we go to a train show. There are a whole bunch of people there, and that is our universe of unknown suspects. We don't know any of them. Um, at the show, we may have uh, you know, a booth, a table. Um, people come up. We talk to them. And hopefully out of that, we're going to get some known suspects or qualified prospects. But the reality is, what I tend to find when I've talked to regions, divisions about what they do, is they tend to talk to people, give them some information, say, check us out, and the people wander away. So from the perspective of selling to those people, unless you know them and identify them, you've lost them. And that's a basic axiom of selling. So if we think about it, what we want to do at the trade show is we want to try to move all the way at the train show to being customers. So how do we do that? So the first thing we have to do is we have to disqualify the known suspects that really don't have a potential to be NMRA members. Now, clearly young family walks up with two kids, you know, they're probably pr pretty, pretty interesting to disqualify. But on the other hand, if somebody walks up who's, you know, 45, 50 is interested, you've got to figure out, do you want to talk to them? So the question you always want to ask is, are you a model railroader? It's a pretty basic question. Um, the answer to that is a qualifier question. Oh, yes, I am, et cetera, et cetera. So now the next question then becomes if they're a qualified prospect, they have to be somebody you can sell to. Well, there's actually a disqualifier that's really interesting because if somebody's already an NMRA member, I don't need to sell to them. So the second question you always ask is, are you an NMRA member? If the answer to that is yes, you say, great, thank you for being a member, you know, et cetera, et cetera, talk to them, you know, do just socialize, et cetera. But the answer is no. Now you have the opportunity to sell. And so one of the things to think about is what's the next line you use? And quite frankly, the next line I always use is why not? It's the best deal in model railroading, et cetera, et cetera. So now you go into the sales campaign of why you want to be a, be a part of it. Um, in the case of the event we just did, we did a great train show um, last weekend in Sacramento. Actually, not this past weekend, but the weekend before that. Um, we had a table. The table was donated by the organizer of the event. Um, so what we were doing there was basically meeting the people that were there and bringing them in and qualifying. But then the question that we began to ask is, what do we want to do to try to get people to close at the event? To do that, we actually have two things. Uh, the first thing is we planned an event two weeks after the train show, which in this case was done by the Sierra Division, which is up there where the train show is running. Um, Dave Putnam, who was on this little program a, a couple of weeks ago, um, ran that and set that up. Um, what they did was they set up for this Saturday going to the California State Railroad Museum and having a guided tour of the NMRA exhibit there by the guy who basically curated it. Um, so that's Charlie Getz. Um, so that's a great thing to encourage people to want to do. And basically the comment was, well, you can come do that with us, whether you want to join or not. But, and this is where we did something that I think is a really interesting thought process. And as I say this, I want to look at the bottom left at that $1,200 for recruiting. Because how do you spend $1,200 in recruiting and lead generation, but you can use it to close? So if you're a salesman, you want to close. And what's the best way to close someone is to have something that they have to do today. So basically what we told people is we said, look, you, have you heard about the rail pass? The rail pass is 1995. It's a great deal. It's something you get nine months of membership. You get to try it out. You're going to get to come to the event in, Sa in Sacramento on Saturday. And today, if you sign up today, we'll pay $10 of it from the region. And the result of that is we signed up 19 members at that train, 19 new members of that train show. And so I want you to look at those. The, the reason I think this is a really interesting thought process is go look at those new member numbers and that $1,200. And 
instead of thinking about spending the $1,200 on marketing and buying a bigger banner and all that, take half of the $1,200 and make it $10 memberships to get people to buy a rail pass. That's 60 new members for your $10. So I, I'll kind of leave it at that I, and open up. If there's any questions or comments, I'll stop sharing. Um, but to my mind, I think this is, we stumbled into something really interesting. I think it's, it's, and it's a combination of three things that can make the show recruiting much more effective. The first is to make sure you have a strategy at the show to engage with the public to figure out who you want to sell to. The second thing is to have something fairly quickly after the show that becomes an enticement for people to want to join because it's something they're going to want to do. It's not abstract of you like the events we do, but we're going to do this great event. And then the third thing is to have a closing motivator that says that you get a benefit today that you lose if you don't do it today. Anyway, that, that was the, the clubs and divisions for today. Um, I hope that was, was interesting. Any questions, comments, thoughts, inputs? I think it's a novel approach. I haven't heard anybody uh, use that approach. I've heard the uh, I've heard of one reason it pays the whole whole twenty dollars, but I think your approach is much better because the model at least has some skin in the game. In your that, way. And, and, and you got it, Jim. You, I'm all about skin in the game. So you give somebody something for free, the value is zero. Exactly. You make you you say I'll do it fifty fifty with you. Now we're in it together and it's, a, and you know, it's, it's, we both have skin in the game. I have skin in the game. Plus the other thing that's beautiful about this by the, you know, that's really cool is who has all the membership apps. Yeah. I do. Cause yeah. Dave gave them to me. So they're all getting emails immediately from us. We're not waiting the three months till we get them on the list from, from national to go engage them, get them started, et cetera. So yeah, I think I think it's a you know, and I won't say it's, there's any brilliant foresight and planning here. It's almost always serendipity, and you stumble onto stuff that that sounds good. But I think it worked. And like I said, if we, our my feeling is if we could do three tra a train show in each of our divisions like that, and have similar success, we will 100% wipe out our attrition rates that we've had over COVID. Sounds like a so, winner. Congratulations. Anyway, enough, enough said. So uh, I will leave with that and throw it back to you, Jim. Okay.